drinking water is one of the basic necessities to good health. Yet somehow, as humans, we manage to screw it up. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the six common mistakes that you're making when it comes to drinking water. Hey, Wellness Warrior, I'm Dr. Zorowski, and I think the topic of good, healthy, pure, clean water is a very important topic. And over the years, I've spent an enormous amount of time studying it to just identify what the best ways are that we can drink water and do it in a good, healthy way. So let's go ahead and dive right into the six common mistakes that you're making when it comes to drinking water. And the first is going to be drinking toxic water, okay? Now, there's a lot of nasty stuff in water, and you might be asking, well, what would be in water that could affect me negatively, right? Because there's a lot of people who drink tap water and not really worry about the purity standards of the water they're consuming. Well, first of all, if you live in farm country like me, you certainly have to be worried about pesticides pesticides and herbicides. It's something that's very, very commonly used. I mean, the farmers are literally spraying it in their fields in gallons and gallons every single week throughout the, the year when they're farming. And so the pesticides and herbicides go into the ground, they get into the underground water channels, and they end up in your drinking water. So we have to make sure that we're avoiding that. Now, if you're someone who's living in the city, you have all kinds of different problems. First of all, um, pharmaceuticals are a huge issue, especially pharmaceuticals that are being flushed down the toilet. And beyond that, pharmaceuticals that are just flushing through people's bodies and going into the water. You can take birth control, for example. This is a huge problem, is loading the waterways with tons of estrogen. And this is why men are having estrogen issues and women are having estrogen issues and sea and marine life are having estrogen issues. It's a huge problem because that stuff doesn't just go away. And then the other thing that you have to be careful for if you live in the city is fluoride in your water. And so no matter where you live, I mean, once again, I live out in farm country. And one of the things that we have out here in high amounts and is naturally occurring, nobody put it there, it just is there naturally, is arsenic, right? So you have to always be careful with these high level of contaminants in your water. And we have to make sure even if we're going and buying water that we are making sure it's with good purity standards. A lot of the purity standards that you're gonna find your typical bottled water having is very low. I mean, one time we got water that was bottled from, uh, I think we had a party or something. I mean, this stuff tastes like toilet water. I mean, it was awful. And I don't know how I would know how toilet water tastes, but anyway, I digress. So. You want to make sure that when you're getting water, it's good stuff. And even when you're going to the store and filling up water containers, you do have a problem with the store itself not keeping up with the filtration system. Uh, that happens all the time. They don't change them at the appropriate time frame, and next thing you know, they're not filtering anything. You're literally just paying for city water. So we want to make sure that we are getting the best water quality that we can. In my house, I use a six stage system that's designed to pull all this stuff out just for our drinking water. It's too expensive to run for the whole house system, but just for the drinking water, we do that. And over the years, I've went through many different methods. I used to distill all my water. Now, I know a lot of people say, oh my gosh, distillation, you can't do that because there's a big problem that pulls out all the minerals. But look, here's the thing, distillation pulls out all of the different contaminants. That's why they use distilled water in labs. When I was getting my degree in biology, we always had to use the distilled water in the labs because that was the purest. So the reality is, is that you would have to drink an enormous amount of water if you were gonna get all the mineral content that you needed throughout the day anyway. So you're better off buying pure water in, or even getting distilled water and putting minerals back in or adding minerals in in different ways in order to get your mineral content up if that's a concern of yours. And the other thing you have to consider is that nobody ever talks about this, but distilled water, yes, that pulls your minerals out. But if you have a really good water for purification system, that still pulls all the minerals out. So either way, you have to add them back in more so than not today. Now, let's move on to our next thing. Drinking too much or too little water, very common mistake. Now, the rule of thumb is that you would consume 50% of your body weight in ounces, okay? So if you weighed 160 pounds, divide that by two, so you're at 80 pounds, so 80 ounces of water 
in order to make sure that you're well hydrated. Now, I don't really agree with that because these arbitrary numbers when it comes to drinking water are kind of silly, right? There's so many different factors involved. Like, did you exercise? What's the climate like that you're in? Are you active throughout the day? Are you sitting at a desk all day? There's a lot of different things to consider. So throwing those numbers out there are a little bit silly. But what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that we are just kind of monitoring ourselves to make sure that we're not falling into a dehydration pattern or even overhydrating. So a few things to look for if you're starting to become dehydrated or drinking too little water is first of all, a headache, okay? That's something very common. You start to get headaches. This is a big problem for me actually when I'm working in the clinic and I'm seeing patients and I'm, you know, just kind of on a roll and I'm, you know, deep in the thought process of patient care, I forget to go drink water. And if I do that, I will find myself in a position at night where I realize I didn't drink enough water and I'll wake up with a real bad headache in the middle of the night if I don't get that turned around really quick. So another thing that will show up is constipation. Muscle cramping is a big one, okay? This is something that's very, very common, okay? Many people are struggling with muscle cramping issues, and we'll talk more about that in just a minute. Brain fatigue is another. I mean, it's unbelievable how many people become very fatigued throughout the day just because they're not well hydrated. Get that hydration in. Now, dry mouth, bright yellow urine, skin elasticity, okay? What you can literally do is pinch the skin on the back of your hand. Is it very elastic or does it kind of just stay in the same position after you pinch it? That's a way of knowing if your skin is showing that you're a little bit dehydrated. Um, and then also false hunger is another one, right? So a lot of people confuse thirst with hunger, okay? So if you're kind of a hungry all the time, make sure that you just go drink a glass of water and see if it's not just a hydration issue that you're facing. And this is where a lot of people overeat because they think that they are hungry. In fact, their body is just thirsty. As a rule of thumb, drink a glass of water before you go and turn to food, especially if you're someone who's trying to lose weight. It'll help you a lot. So also, you could have a problem where you're drinking too much water, okay? That was all the symptoms of too little, but the symptom of too much is typically a electrolyte depletion issue, okay? Now, literally, you you can have electrolyte depletion issues on either side of the spectrum if you're drinking too little or too much. But the reality is, is that if this shows up, one of the big and common signs that you're going to find that you'll have is fatigue, okay? And then also a lot of muscle cramping. So those two things you can watch out for. And you can just put a little sea salt in your water. You can also use a really good, tasty electrolyte drink. I use an electrolyte drink almost every single day. And it's simply because when you're trying to eat healthy and you're just drinking water, and that's like your main fluid source, and you're somebody who's cut all the energy drinks and sodas and all the teas and all that stuff out of your life, it's nice to switch it up a little bit and have something that is a different flavor. I'll put a link in the description below to the electrolytes that I use every single day. There's a grape, there's an orange, and there's a blue raspberry. They are delicious. So we want to make sure that we are getting the proper amount of electrolytes because this will sway us and make, make us feel horrible. It's so often that people are dealing with electrolyte issues, it blows my mind. When I have people in the clinic come in and say, uh, you know, doc, I'm gonna schedule an appointment with you because I'm just having such bad muscle cramps in my legs at night. I'm like, don't schedule an appointment with me. That's a waste of my time. That's a waste of your money. Take these electrolytes first and tell me how you feel in like, 99% of the time they go, oh yeah, that fixed it, like perfect, right? So make sure that you're staying well hydrated, but staying hydrated appropriately and getting the electrolytes in, it's gonna make you feel a lot better. It also is very much attached to your energy throughout the day. So as a rule of thumb, what I like to do is consume about 40 to 60% of your body weight in ounces, okay? And that's a sliding scale simply because if you exercise, if you're very active, if you're in a hot climate, you have to adjust to that, okay? Don't get caught in the trap where it's like a gallon a day or you know this exact amount, eight glasses a day. Those are silly numbers, don't fall into that. Moving on from that, the next thing you gotta watch out for is drinking too much water when you're eating, okay? This is something that actually has a pretty negative impact on your digestion. What it does is it basically dilutes your stomach acid and as a result of that, you can get a lot of bloating, you can have a hard time breaking down proteins, and it can cause a lot of digestive distress, okay? So it doesn't mean that you can't drink any water when eating, but certainly you don't wanna be pounding the water when you're eating. Try to drink a lot of water like pre-meal or post-meal, but like not directly when you're eating because it will affect your ability to digest your food properly. 
Now, the next one is not drinking any water when you wake up. Okay, this is a big problem. People wake up and after going eight hours of sleep, let's say, your body is very dehydrated at that point. One of the first things I like to do is I wake up and I exercise and I do an electrolyte drink right then and there simply because I know that there's the dehydration issue from the exercise, but also from sleeping all night and not drinking any water. So I drink a glass of water and then that. Now, some people will have coffee right off the bat and that's even kind of compounding the dehydration issue. So we wanna make sure that we are drinking water right off the bat because that's, if we start off our day fatigued out, like, you know, it's not going to feel good. And dehydration causes fatigue. And so we also don't wanna to try to cover up that dehydration fatigue by drinking more caffeine from the coffee. So water should be your first go-to. Like you don't wanna drink coffee or teas or anything like that upon waking until you've had your glass of water. And if you want to do what I do, you can throw some electrolytes in at that point in time too. Next on our list is going to be drinking too much at night, okay? This is a category I fall into all the time where it's like, like I said, I'm working with patients all day and my mind's just kind of very much focused. I don't drink enough water and then nighttime comes and I go, oh my gosh, like I, I better do something about this dehydration issue. So I'm like slamming water at night, trying to like get my you know hydration back up. And then of course you're running to the bathroom all night. So what the ideal thing to do is make sure that you're staying well hydrated throughout the entire day. And then you're tapering off at night so that you can have a better night's sleep because uh, otherwise you run to the bathroom all night. And then drinking out of plastic containers or just like low quality water containers in general. Um, a lot of people drink out of like a blender bottle and those are plastic and so you shouldn't be drinking out of those all the time. Drinking out of cheap plastic containers of the water bottles that you get from the store, shouldn't be drinking out of those. Drinking out of plastic gallon jugs, you wanna stay away from that stuff. And the reality is, is most people will say, well, I just make sure I get BPA free. But the thing is that you have to understand about plastic is that nobody really understands all the chemicals that are in it. What's happened with the plastic industry is because BPA was so demonized and they still need to use all these different chemicals to make the plastic, they essentially pulled out BPA because they identified that it was a real problem and causing a lot of health issues. However, what they do in these industries is that they go and just make a couple of derivatives that are a few molecules off or different that are nearly the exact same thing and they'll have 10 different chemicals in there. Though they pulled out BPA, nobody's complaining. So we have to make sure that we're just staying away from plastic altogether when we're drinking. I'm a big fan of using a stainless steel container or drinking out of glass. Those are gonna be the best case scenarios for you, ceramic, whatever, but we wanna make sure that we're staying away from the cheap uh, containers that could have some of these chemicals leaking out into your water because obviously we're doing the most we can. If you follow this channel, you understand the toxicity issues that our, our bodies are facing every single day. We wanna make sure that we are staying away from every toxin possible and that would definitely be plastic containers. So these are the top things that you have to watch out for when it comes to water. Now that you are so much more educated on water, I hope you're making the best decisions for your health. If you enjoyed this video, I think you'll really like this video over here next.